All right then, gang. So now we have Apollo set up on the front end. We can now start to get into all the real juicy fun stuff and make some queries from our React application. But before we do that, I just want to correct a schoolboy error I made in the last video when we set up this Apollo client, and that is to remove this semicolon right here. That shouldn't be there. It's going to cause an error later on, so get rid of that. Okay, so now that's out of the way. What we'd like to do is make a query from this book list component, right? Because we'd like to retrieve a list of all the different books and output them in a list right here. Make sense? So then how do we make queries in a component? Well, there's two steps. First of all, we need to construct the query much like we did in GraphQL. Then we take that query and we bind it to the component so that inside the component, we have access to all the data that comes back from the query. So let's take this one step at a time and do the first step, which is constructing the query. Now, like I said many times before, GraphQL query language is not JavaScript. It looks like JavaScript, but it's not. So when we construct it, we need the help of another package to help parse it. All right. We need to parse our query so then we can make them. So the way we do this is by importing something up here and we're going to import GQL from and it's going to be from apollo hyphen boost all right sweet so now we have that we can create our query i'm going to store this query in a constant and we'll call it get books query that makes sense right since we're getting all the books and we set that equal to gql which we imported here then after that we place the query directly after it okay no space directly after it but it has to be within a template string which are the little ticks like that that key is below the escape button on my keyboard so we do the ticks the back ticks and then we do our query so open the curly braces then the query we want to make is for the books all the books then from each book we want the name and we want the id of the book for example so this should look awfully familiar because these are the kind of queries that we were making in graphical before, right? Only this time we're embedding them in the template string right here and putting them after GQL. All right. Then we're storing that inside this get books query. So that's the first step done. We have now made this query or constructed this query. The second thing we need to do is bind this query to this component right here so that we can access the data that comes back from this query. So how do we do that? Well, again, it's pretty simple, but we do need the help of another package. So this time I'm going to import GraphQL from React hyphen Apollo. Remember this React Apollo package right here is the one that helps us to bind Apollo to React. All right. So this is always to do with kind of gluing stuff together, if you like. So what we're going to do to bind or to glue this query to this component is use this thing we just imported, right? And we're going to use it right at the bottom when we export this component. So let's paste it there and it's a function. And as a parameter, it takes in the query we want to bind to this component, which is this get books query. So let's copy that dude and paste it right here. Then we also surround book list in parentheses as well. So what we're saying is, Take this thing right here and use it to bind this query to this component so that now inside this component, we have access to all of the data that comes back from this query. But whereabouts do we have access to it? Where is it stored? Well, it's stored in the components props. So what we could do just to test this is console.log this.props. So this is going to log this component's props out to the console whenever the component renders. OK, so let's give this a whirl and fair warning. This is probably not going to work first time round. And I'll explain why in a minute. But let's just make sure our application is running. Yes, it is. You need to run NPM start to do that. Remember, so just to be safe, we'll refresh inspect to go into the console. Let's zoom in and whoo, we have some errors <laughs> right then. So. It's saying here basically that it's failed to fetch the uh, data from the server. And the reason is because of access control allow origin, right? So basically by default, our server, our GraphQL server is not accepting uh, requests from another server. Remember these two 
are coming from different servers. The front end and the back end over here are coming from different servers, right? So what we need to do is install something on our Express GraphQL server over here that allows requests from other servers, essentially. And that package is called Cause. So let us open up the code and open up the server file and check out package.json. Right now it's not installed. So let's go over to the server side stuff over here. Cancel out of this process. Yep. And say npm install cause. And again, you might need to pass through the save flag like so. Okay. All right. So now we can open up app.js and we can require that over here. We can say const cause is going to be equal to require cause and we're going to use this for our application so underneath here we'll just make a little comment that says allow cross origin requests and then underneath we'll say app.use cause like so all right then so let's now save this and restart the server so we'll say nodemon app make sure everything's running on this side as well cool it is now we can go over to the front end, uh, the front end here, refresh. And you're going to see we have two objects logged to the console here, right? So this is the props object each time around. Now, the reason that there's two is because when we first load this up in a browser, the React component renders to the browser, right? And at that point, the, uh, the query is still going on in the background. So if we open up this props object we can see here we have a data property right this data property is the property from our graphql query and at the minute you can see loading is true and we don't have any actual data returned to us from the server right but then when we get that data returned to us from the server it updates the um the props object and adds that data to it so then the react component re-renders and we now have access in this data object to the books property and inside there all of the different books from the server that is awesome so all of those books now are attached to this data property inside the props of this react component therefore we can use them to output the data to the screen which we'll do in the very next tutorial